Okay. <laughs> no one. But uh, I see the par parasite. Oh, you see a parasite? Oh, I heard it. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Mm. Very good. It's very good him. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to know, how did you find the story of uh, Baran Bagvan, Winder, and how did you end up uh, doing the, the movie? Well, it's a very interesting story because uh, my wife and I were in a long distance relationship from Tel Aviv to LA and you know, I, I, we got engaged and I knew that I was uh, about to move to LA. So I was looking for my first US feature uh, and I was sitting in a coffee shop in Tel Aviv and I was reading the paper and suddenly I saw this article about Brian Widener and um, the montage of his face being um, tattooed and slowly fading out to uh, normal. And I was blown away by the story and I was like, holy shit, this is, I think this is my first American movie. So I called my wife and I told her, listen, we have to get their contact numbers and phone numbers and get their life rights. So through MSNBC, they did a documentary about him, namely Raising Hate. Um, we got their link, uh, to their email, and I wrote uh, uh, him an email about my grandparents who are local survivors and why me as an Israeli um, to tell this story. And um, after two months, he re replied to me and say, you know, if you're really serious, let's Skype. And we Skyped, and he was very nice on Skype, and he said, uh, why don't you come to meet me? Mm -hmm. And he wanted to see that I'm serious, that I'm not some, you know, so I came from Tel Aviv, my wife came from LA, and we met, we met them in kind of like uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, almost like Breaking Bad, <laughs> a coffee shop, you know, and it was, and he, they came with a car and they uh, make a, made a round s uh, through the coffee shop to see that we we're not assassins or something like that because they were afraid. And they came and we met them and it was, Great. I mean, I'm the first Jewish man he met. You know, he was hating me, but he didn't know why before. And he's the first skinhead I met. And uh, we had a beautiful weekend together about stories. And I brought my cell phone and I recorded them. And after these three days, he said, you know what? I'm giving you my story. I trust you. He signed the life rights on a napkin. Oh. I took the napkin to LA to my lawyer. And uh, I started writing the script. And I wrote it for a year and a half, and it was very, you know, very powerful. And then my, my agent sent the script to 50 producers in LA. But, and we got the no, 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 no. We didn't get even one yes. People passed on it. And they said, look, the script is great. And your work in Israel is great. They saw strangers. Uh, but there's not really neo-Nazis in the States. It's a little bit 90s, you know? It's like you're telling a story that is not relevant to what's going on in, in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, I did the research. I know it's real. It's bullshit what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And they said, nope. So I was bummed. I was really bummed. And um, so my good friend from Israel, Sharon Maimon, uh, called me and said, look, I have, a, I have an idea for a short. It's also about racism. It's not exactly like your feature. And he told me the idea, I was blown away. Um, and my wife and I put all our money to make this short because all my features in Israel were shorts before. So it's kind of like a system for me to work. And we made the short, we edited it, we sent it again to those 50 producers and suddenly we got a different reaction. Um, people, but not only because of that, because Trump got elected, mm -hmm. Charlottesville happened, uh, the synagogue massacre in the East Coast happened. So suddenly it was a crazy world and all those neo-Nazis were out there. So here we had producers that were afraid to make it. They said, we love it, but we're afraid. And uh, Sting, the musician Sting and his wife Trudy, who is a producer, saw the short and said, we're in. We're going to recruit the money for you. And Orin Movement came on board, and suddenly we have a movie. So that's how everything started. Okay. Nice. It's quite nice. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, I, I love ver very much your movie. Thank you so much. It's, I appreciate uh, it's it. uh, like uh, uh, a, a, punch, a, punch, a punch, punch in the gut. <laughs> in my yeah. head. And um, um, I like uh, 
uh, to the the scene in the hospital. It's like in the like guideline uh, all of the film, uh, all of the movie, and uh, this this uh, this scene is. Incredible. Which, which scene? The, in the hospital, uh, when he, he uh, remove. Oh, uh, all the removals. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that yeah. uh, all the films are. The process. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly, and uh, it's like uh, poetic. Uh, yeah. This time in in your movie. Thank you. I like that Thank very you. much. I I wanted to make something poetic, you know, not only hard. Yes. Yeah, but it also it's it's the. Removal scenes are like the birth of a new person. Yes. It's a rebirth. It's a, you know, it's like almost like a. Um, it's like a uh, red redemption. Yeah, redemption. Oh, yeah. Sorry for my English. Yes, yes, but it's also like um, very painful because mm -hmm. he, he wanted to feel the pain that he caused other people. So yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't a question, right? It was more of a statement. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. What can you tell us about your collaboration with Jenny Bell? Oh my God, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so amazing. I mean, look, I met him for the first time and he was said, why me? Because look at me, I'm skinny, I'm like, I'm, I'm this kind of like, why, why you choose me? And I told him, you are so good and this is something you didn't do before. And I know that you can transform to this guy. It will take you time, but you can do it. I, so I believe in you, you need to believe in me. Mm -hmm. We need to have this trust. Yes. And he said, well, let me think about it. And he took his time, you know, to think. And mm -hmm. I think that after he saw that Danielle McDonald is there, mm -hmm. he said to himself, okay, now I see where you're going. I see that it's going to be real and raw. This guy was, fin he did such an amazing work. He went to Brian, lived with him for one month. He uh, ate like crazy, like put... 30 pounds on his face. He went to put the tattoos on his face and try that. He uh, went to do animal work. Uh, it mm -hmm. means that you becoming an animal. It's like um, a system of acting. You, you know, for, um, I don't know if you saw the movie, uh, The Nightcrawler? Yes. Did you see it? Yeah. So uh, he was working like um, uh, a hyena that come at night. Mm -hmm. That was his animal. Jamie became shark. So it, his eyes were like, you know, you couldn't feel anything. And he's like, almost like he's stiff and he's smelling blood. That's how he started the movie. So um, he did a brilliant job. And the only thing I did in, in the shooting was fine tuning him, you know, because he was so good. It was just telling him, okay, here I want less, here I want like more, mm -hmm. be more emotional a little bit here, but not much, you know. And when he came to the set for the first time with the tattoos, I was like, whoa, I was shocked. And Brian Widener came to the set, the real Brian Widener, and he saw it and he said, I'm, I'm sorry, it's too, it's too, it's like looking at myself in the mirror, I cannot. And he went back to the hotel because it was too, too much for him. Thank you. All right, so that relies on what I wanted to ask you then. Um, there's a lot of hardcore scenes and with a lot of anger to be played and made by actors which are really into the roles. I'm thinking also about Bill Camp, which I didn't recognize at first. Oh, you didn't recognize him? He's always the nice uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's this guy, so it's, it was quite shocking. And um, how did everybody cope with the pressure with, which might have been on the set and the fact that um, everybody has to be so tense every time? Was it difficult to work with that? Um, did you have to try to keep it light? Mm, you know, we were in the same hotel. It was such a small budget and it was minus 10 in, it was winter. So we were all in the same place. We all knew that we're doing something important. It's not a movie, it's not like, you know, escapism or like something soft or, this is important movie to be made. So everybody, you know, when were hard scenes, Jamie took everyone and just hugged everyone, like the scene in the pool when he started pushing and mm -hmm. beating this and the. So after that, he took the girls and he took like mm -hmm. Danielle and they he just hugged them. He said, "It's only a movie. I'm okay. You're fine." Um, so yeah, I think that it's it's it was it was shocking to see that, but we knew that when they were making a movie, mm. you know, at, at the end of the day, professional actors. 
it's hard, but it's it's yeah. Good then. <laughs> but there was I gotta tell you there was a quiet in the nobody spoke mm-hmm. in the team, in the in the crew. A lot of quiet. Like after such a powerful scene, no one no one talks. Yeah. Did you want it to do the feature before you do the um, short? You knew you want to do the feature? No, you were doing the short? The short was made only to make the feature happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wasn't supposed to make a short. Okay. I, I like the world of Ma. Yeah, she's amazing. Uh, yes, yeah, she's very amazing and I, I think she's... Uh, Vera uh, Farmiga. She's very important in, in the movie. Because uh, I I don't know if uh, uh, perhaps it's a bad personality of the movie, perhaps I don't know. She is, uh-huh. yeah. But also people, it's not black and white, right? Yes. It, people are not black and white. You have layers, and and she was damaged because she lost her kid when she she lost her baby when she was giving birth, and that we t- they say about that. So she's acting from damaged person. She's like um, scratched in a way. And and I think that uh, her character is not only bad. You know, you can feel that she's, it's her kids, you know, and she doesn't want to give away her son. Um, And it's almost for her like losing again a baby when he's gone. So it's fun because I, I read that, I write. Uh, the world is not uh, wa- white or and black or yeah, it's not white. Uh, and uh, I think uh, your your movie is very humanist. Yeah, because uh, it was important for me to show humanity a little bit, to be human in such a hard subject. You gotta be human, otherwise it's not watchable. Mm-hmm. It's hard to watch. I mean, even in the film like Irre- Irreversible, uh, which is very hard, and you have a hard scene, it's still so human, you know. And the movie goes backwards, right? Mm-hmm. And at the end, there's a shot on the grass when they hug each other, and it's like, oh my God, you feel like your heart is about to. So yeah, I, it's, it was very really important for me to be humanized. Mm-hmm. Which scene was the most difficult for you to shoot, and why? Scene. Um, scene, yeah. Okay, so two scenes were very difficult to the dog fight. Okay. Um, in America. Uh, other like not other, other countries, uh, you, they don't allow you to touch the two dogs. Okay. So the two dogs cannot touch each other because it's cr- an, uh, animal cruelty. Yeah, yeah. So you have someone from the animal um, protection service, and they on set and they said, well, uh, 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 <laughs> no. don't do this. And I said, but how will I, how will I make a dog fight without <laughs> touching each other? <laughs> how do I do it? It's your problem. So uh, what I did is I shot this dog and I saw this dog. And in the editing, I cut in the middle and I glue them together so they, yes. all, they you touch each other and you have the sound is very powerful. So okay. it sounds like, a, but it took me half a day only to make them charge okay. at each other. So it's not animal cruelty. Okay. That's one. The second scene um, that was very par- uh, hard to um, shoot was in the car a graveyard. Yeah when the father and the whole, and they beat him. Um, first of all, it was minus 20. Mm-hmm. It was so fucking cold. So <laughs> we were freezing, it was 2 a.m. We had the, enti- the entire night <coughs> to shoot, and I have seven people, uh, uh, you know, boxing. I have uh, people on the ground, and I need to change because they're getting dirty. Anyway, one scene, Jamie Bell and the other guy were really fighting and he kicked him in the balls. Oh, and Jamie <laughs> Bell really was, the, really was on the floor and we said, good, good, good <laughs> acting. And this guy, no, no, my balls, really my balls. <laughs> so we had to break everything and yeah. go to put ice on his balls. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, yeah, and when, when we came back, everything was snow. Wow. So we had to <laughs> clean all the snow so it will be continuity from the other, you know, and so, and suddenly, in the middle of the scene, I see the the sun is rising. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that. You know that. Uh, so I'm like, oh my God, what's what's gonna <laughs> happen tonight? So I had to nice. shoot very fast. Thank you. 
um, more of a general way you spoke earlier when you were trying to do the movie that people told you that there was no such thing, such thing, sorry, actually, like white supremacy yeah. or something. And, um, I mean, so there is, but few, yeah, few people. But they, everybody like tried to yeah. keep it down. Yeah. Uh, and it really is an American problem, but we have, it's, it's metaphoric in a lot of ways, because even in Europe nowadays, we see a rise of fascism mm -hmm. and a lot Germany, of extremes going up. France. No, 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 even nowadays we have Italy, which is Italy and uh, to Hungary, that. Greece, we Hungary, have Greece, Spain, Spain, which is Spain. a bad way. So, um, I guess that the message in your movie is for everyone to hear. So, what were the keys you wanted to use for everyone worldwide to understand? Well, look, once you see a story about racism, I think it, you know, first of all, it's a reflection of my country, in Israel. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have so much, so much racism in Israel I mean, against uh, Ethiopians, against. Uh, Arabs against m m Muslims against Russians, uh, the religious hate the non-religious. The non-religious hate the religious. I mean, it's, it's all the time conflicts. You know, all the time racism, and and I think that it's eventually about us, about you, mm. uh, about the country that we live in, because um, it's not only about America. And and that's what I'm saying to every every Q and A that I make, that it's about the world. And that's why I want this film to be in the cinema in France for more people to see it. Because it's, it will be in Germany, it will be in many places. Uh, in Israel it opens like next month. So I hope it will be in France too, in Paris. So people will see it. Yeah. C'est tout? Uh, no. What can you tell Ça us va? about <laughs> the current project? Oh, the next project? Yes, of course. Okay, so we have... I have two projects that I'm working on. First of all, it's um, uh, the Continuous for Skin. Uh, it's from Daryl' point of view. Okay. Okay. So his life, how he approached life, and the way he fight racism, but not only about Brian Widener, he saved 15 people. Um, mm -hmm. And his, um, you know, it's, his life is very interesting. So we acquired his life rights, and now mm -hmm. we're writing his script, okay. uh, which will be Skin Part Two but not, mm -hmm. it will not get cold skin, obviously. Um, and I have a story that about my grandmother who was a Holocaust survivor and mm -hmm. at the age of 55, she had depressions and she post -trauma, trauma from the Holocaust and she wanted to kill herself and the family didn't know what to do. And uh, she met through her manicurist, uh, she met this gorgeous woman like Sophia Loren mm -hmm. uh, at the age of 35 belly dancing, dark skin, beautiful. And this woman told her, I'm gonna make you happy. Just stick, stick, stick with me. And they start dancing and fasting and eating good and you know, all this mambo jumbo. And uh, my grandma became happy. And the family was like, wow, this is a miracle. Wow, she made, but what we didn't know is that this woman whose name is Lord, uh, she was a cult leader. And uh, she had 37 women around her and she healed all these women, but she took also their money, mm -hmm. and she made them divorce their husbands. And my grandmother divorced my, uh, okay. her husband, and she fell in love with, with her. And uh, she took all the women and moved her, all the women to Virginia, in the woods, so nobody can find them. Cut to five years later, my mom and my aunt were flying to Virginia to save grandma and bring her back home so that was the movie the movie is about mothers and daughters the mother becomes a juvenile the daughters become the grown-up in charge and it's about family as well yeah. family what is the and also what is happiness what are you willing to do in order to be happy good question yeah it's really interesting <laughs> yeah that's one thing i i wanted to talk to you about that because um in skin uh, we can then say that it's a lot about sectorism too, not only about uh, just a racist cult, because we see, uh, we can understand uh, what Brian is going through by seeing how Gavin, the young boy, falls into it, yeah. and just the way they use him uh, with uh, lots of tenderness, lots of affection, and we can understand why when he say, no, it's my family, I can't get out, we can understand it. Yeah. So um, I think it's not just on your that we can use that for sects, we can use it Oh yeah, for it could be things. ISIS, mm -hmm. it could be like a Christian cult, mm -hmm. it could be uh, in Saudi Arabia, or it could be like uh, in uh, religious Jews uh, in Mea Shearim, you know, in uh, Jerusalem. It could be a lot of 
cults. You know, it's it's the same pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, finally, uh, I like something. The the response is uh, love. Yes, love. Right. Love overcomes hate. Yes. Right. Yes. He chose love. Yes. At the end of the day, he chose those girls, these women, this this one. Yeah, he chose love. Perhaps love is a solution. Not perhaps. Mm -hmm. This is a solution, mm -hmm. and also dialogue. Start talking to each other. You know. Uh, but love is, you know, Dalai Lama and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah I to totally believe in this. But, but because now it's all about hatred. Mm -hmm. And also people from the left, they're also very angry. You know, so in America, there are people that say, why do I need to forgive Brian Weidner? Let him rot in jail. I fucking hate this man. And some people say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Let's hear what he has to say. We, we brought Daryl and Brian uh, to New York for a surprise um, for the surprise um, uh, for the audience so the audience saw the movie and after the movie was done uh, Daryl came and said I have a surprise for you I have someone that I really want you to give respect to he did a, a very hard uh, transition and he brought Brian Widener and he got standing ovation and he started crying and that for me was everything you know I have it here, I, w I want to show you this, hold on. It was an um, amazing moment, so I think that, um, hold on, here, where is it? Um, it's like a poetic choice to... Um, poetic, yeah. <laughs> That was a nice moment, you know, ah, yes. and I felt that this guy deserve a lot of respect for making the change because it's the, most people don't make this change. Most most people go to jail or they die. <laughs> so uh, it's a good example. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank uh, you. Thank you.